Hi, I'm Hafiz again and in this session we are going to talk about a very very important area of the exam syllabus which is part of the decision making and that's pricing. So here we go, let's start. Introduction to pricing. As we know that pricing is one of the most important and sensitive decisions uh, management takes on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, because the prices keep on fluctuating from the beginning to the end of the year depending upon a number of reasons. So first of all, let's have a look at what factors change the prices, what factors are involved while taking the pricing decisions. Okay, organizational goals. Okay, that whether the organization wants to generate more profit or organization generate wants to generate less profit because there is a nature of organization as well. Some profit are more, uh, some organizations are more into profit motives and some organizations are less into profit motives. Okay, some organizations are meant for social purposes and some organizations are meant for profit purposes. So that's the internal policy of the organization to decide what level of profitability they want okay right price and demand relationship which is very very key area of this topic okay we are going to look at in big details uh, how price and demand are related to each other because generally we know through the rules of economics in the market that when one of these forces go up another one comes down and vice versa. Then competitors of course our price is affected by the level of competition if the competition is stronger generally the price is down and if the competition is slightly less then the price may be kept at a higher level. Cost as we are always aware of this costing that cost is the key area of the price because cost and with some profit determines the selling price so if the cost goes up due to any reason the value of the materials or labor or labor rate usage okay or overheads it makes the fluctuation in price okay uh, so price and demand relationship is very very important then cost is very very important okay being an accountant I'm talking about okay product mix what type of products we are selling are we selling in a mix or a bundle or a package or are we selling products one by one you might have noticed a number of supermarkets and shops and retailers they sell product as a mix okay you can buy the main product along with the accessories and it's created a package okay or two three things as part of the package quality of course um, quality is one of the area where a number of customers like to spend money okay to, if you ask me what is the definition of quality always I get confused about it okay some people consider quality is the usefulness of the product some people consider life or durability of the product how long this product will last okay and a number of people say no that's all crap okay who will use this product for 20 years okay we want a change as the fashion changes we want a new product as the designs and the society's norms and values change we change the product so we don't want to use this TV for 10 years we may keep it for two three years and then we will change it we don't want to use this mobile phone for another 15 years a new model will come and we will change it so it applies in society I'm not talking about everybody but a number of people think in that way and a number of people think in this way that quality actually represents the prestige quality actually reflects the premium brands of the product okay name of the product oh because those people have that product I should have as well so you would find this prestige okay or premiership of the products in various industries okay you can buy a basic car which does the same job as compared to another car which is maybe 10 times more expensive which does the same job same job means it gets us from A to B okay but with the names we spend money inflation which is the economic or external factor 
as if the inflation is rising in the society price goes up if inflation is going down generally price comes down okay and last but not the least product life cycle okay if the product is of short life generally price kept is higher and if the product is longer life generally product price is lower in order to stay in the market for longer period and to face competition and there are so many other things as well these are just a few factors I have listed down for example local laws affect the price as well sales tax rate or duties and so on okay also the supply of the product scarcities also affect the price as well at the same time you can think about weather or seasonality as well so as the weather changes price may be affected as well a number of things okay or maybe the social events okay or special events in the society that affect the price as well okay now here is there are a number of ways to calculate the price okay uh, number one cost plus which is very straightforward all we need to do is we need to add a cost if it is marginal then only variable cost plus profit if it is full cost approach total cost plus profit so idea is cost plus price is simply cost plus profit and I think I would sound a bit silly if I tell you what cost is remember the absorption costing activity based costing etc we all know the meaning of cost adding the materials with labor with overheads makes up cost okay uh, demand based pricing which is very important we are going to have a look at in a moment okay based upon this economic theory to maximize profits in the short term and then market based marketing based pricing so this is the area which you will have to read a little bit it's all theoretical okay uh, marketing based approaches are generally those approaches which organization or management applies in order to uh, generate and generate and generate profits in the long run okay a number of issues first of all actually let's have a look at marketing based approaches or other pricing strategies before we look at the cost plus and demand based pricing okay so now these are some theoretical areas where there are no numbers no technicalities purely knowledge so let's spend a few moments on this uh, these strategies market skimming very likely to come in exams for two three four marks sometimes market skimming is when the aim of the organization is to generate maximum or highest level of profit in the short term in the short run reason being life of the product is very short okay generally it involves technology products or you know these um, electronic type of products where the models are changed every now and then mobile phones etc okay so when the life of the product is short generally the price kept is very high okay and the organization wants to generate as much profit as possible skimming is very suitable when the products are unique and the products do not have much competition so whenever a unique product comes in the market we know that people are queuing up to buy that product because they know that it it will have limited life maybe in six months one year the product will be removed okay and the new model will be coming so many people like to buy the product straight away when it is launched and they are willing to pay a higher price some of the features you can see here generally low volume because price is very high so not everybody wants to spend this money so whenever the price is high demand or volume is generally low okay low initial investment in production capacity because we we are producing lower volumes so we don't need too much capacity to start with okay it is low risk if strategy fails price can be dropped as well but generally it happens that they determine the life cycle of the product that for a few months price will be high because they know people will be buying and afterwards when the trends change slightly then they can drop the price as well okay so generally unique products come under the market skimming right market penetration which is the second approach market penetration pricing is when the price is kept slightly low to start with 
because the aim is not to make all the money to start with okay aim is not to make high amount of profit large profit at the beginning aim is to make the people addicted aim is to get the people used to with the product aim is to get the people become part of this product that they they can't live without this product so generally the price kept is very low with the passage of time price can be in, increased as well okay but the aim is to stay in the market for a very very long period of time okay you can see the examples of products which you your grandparents have used your parents have used and you are still using them okay number of cereals you use in your breakfasts and you can imagine how many years these cereals are in the market okay different type of soaps or shampoos you can imagine okay generations are using them okay again and again and again of course slightly changes happen as well but the brand or the product remains the same so idea is keep the price low and focus mass market meaning a huge volume higher volume okay it involves substantial investment reason is because of the massive volume because of larger volume it needs huge production capacity huge warehousing capacity hundreds or thousands of employees or workers to produce those products many many people to deliver the product so it involves substantial investment okay it is very risky in a way because you invest so much money okay and if something goes wrong with the product if customers don't like the product okay it will be very very hard to recover the investment okay and if you keep the price even further down if you decrease the price you may not generate profits so it has some risks but of course the product experts do sufficient research before they launch the product complementary pricing okay these are generally the prices of those products which are sold as a complement okay people buy a range of products for example if people buy a computer okay you would appreciate computer can't be run without sufficient softwares so you may have to buy some other softwares in order your for your computer to run effectively okay for example if you would buy shoes a number of people may end up buying shoe polish as well okay something like this if you would buy a car a number of people may buy car seat covers as well something like this which are complementary okay so if the demand of main product increases demand of accessories increase as well okay next one is product line pricing product line pricing is that a number of times some products are related with each other in the in that line of the production okay and when this happens then a specific special price is introduced generally some people call it a package price as well some people actually call it product line price as well you might have seen i don't know i mean i think you might everybody uh, is a customer so you might have noticed a number of products for example if you go to the shops grocery shops or supermarkets you might have observed that a range of drinks soft drinks are displayed in shelves okay for example here is coca cola here is pepsi here is another cola and here is another cola or so on okay and a number of times um, you know coca cola sprite and fanta and so on you know they are displayed as well that makes a line of products okay so a number of times i have observed while going to the supermarkets that if you buy two you give a diff you pay a different price okay so it's like okay either buy this one or buy that one okay that makes so product line pricing strategies include setting prices that are proportional to full or marginal cost with the same profit margin for all products in the product line so whether i mean idea is whether you are producing coke or fanta okay so idea is the cost is more or less the same packaging is more or less the same volume is more or less the same so whether customer buys product a or customer buys product b company ends up with more or less the same money okay volume discounting which is very straightforward idea that if a number of people place orders in bulk they get some level of discounts and if people 
place orders in small quantities, they may get lower or no discounts at all. So generally, this is a marketing strategy that in order to promote our sales, okay, right, buy two and get the second, uh, get the third at half price or so on, or buy one, get the second at half price, etc. Okay, or if you buy two or three, you will pay a different price. Okay, so it's like buying in different quantities. Price discrimination, which you might have observed in your society as well. Okay, it is charging a different price to different customers of the same product. You charge different price to different customers. What it, how it happens? Very simple. A number of times it happens that uh, if you, your location changes, okay, people charge differently. I mean, I can give you one example that if you are living in location A and for example, you want house extension, you want to put a new garden or new kitchen or any other refurbishing, refurbishment of your house, you contact any builders, okay? They come and they will give you a price quotation. And at a location B, if you want the same kind of thing, okay, builders will quote a different price. Okay, I mean, I can give you an example being based in London. If your property is in Chelsea and Kensington, okay, where most of the footballers and the celebrities live, builders will charge different price because they know these footballers and celebrities and these movie stars, they, they can pay as much you ask for but if you are living miles and miles and miles away in Essex somewhere okay where people are not that rich as compared to some other parts of the country then you would notice people may not be able to pay and the builders will keep price low as well so it's like generally location okay you buy a cup of coffee in one place at a different price and the same cup of coffee from the same chain elsewhere you may pay differently Okay, especially prices on motorways, etc. So these ideas, you just need to read only the knowledge, okay? No application at all. Here are the applications. Demand-based pricing. Okay, first of all, <coughs> we are, excuse me, we are trying to understand the relationship between price and demand of the product. What we know so far is that both forces, demand and price, they relate to each other, but in an inverse way, okay? They have inverse relationship with each other. Meaning to say, if price goes up, demand comes down. Or if price goes down, generally the demand tends to increase. So that's the opposite relationship. One factor goes up and another one has to go down. This is general trends in the market. Okay, we can have a look at this graph, which you can see actually a chart line on the screen as well, which is the demand based pricing. And this is called as demand curve. Demand curve. On X axis, we have quantity or demand, which is Q. And on the Y axis, we have price or P. Okay, meaning to say when the price was at this level, quantity was here. And when the price was here, quantity was there. Okay, so you've seen this probably this demand curve many, many times. Okay, just to reflect the relationship between price and demand. Now, interestingly, a few things we need to understand in order to derive the demand curve, okay? Demand curve is an equation which is always given to you by the examiners in the formula sheet, and that equation is P equals to A minus BQ, okay? And examiners explain this as well. What do we mean by P and A and B and Q? They tell us, okay, all right? So please remember, a is maximum price when quantity is zero. So this is A. Okay. B is this slope or gradient of the demand curve. 
that what relationship exists between price and demand, meaning how much increase in price will happen which will affect demand. Okay, if we increase the price by 10%, will we have a reduction in demand by 10% or the other way around? Okay, something like that, right? So we need to determine this B, okay, by using a formula. So B examiner gives us to calculate this value of B, which is change in price divided by change in quantity or demand. Okay, you don't need to worry, examiner will give you this formula completely explained. Right, now here is the understanding. What do you think about this A for the business perspective? Okay, because this F5 is performance management. What do you think about A? I think you are telling me that this is a point or price which any management should avoid because this would reduce the profitability. Why? Because at this price A, absolute maximum price, not many people will buy the product. And if the demand is too low or almost zero, there is no revenue, there is no profit. Okay, so A should be avoided at all times. If we look at the other side of the demand curve, which is here, touching the x-axis, touching the x-axis, okay, we see another interesting thing. Now, this point is the maximum quantity, which is not explained in the books or here, but idea is this is another point demand or quantity to be avoided. <coughs> so top part is the price to be avoided and the bottom part is quantity or demand to be avoided. Reason being this is such an absolute infinite quantity which we cannot produce. We do not have enough production capacities to produce this and secondly at this quantity the price will be very very low and if the price is very very low we cannot make enough profits so idea is not actually to keep the price very high or very low or to keep the pro quantity very low or very high okay idea lies in simply this improve the performance of the organization and how the performance of the organization can be improved to set a most realistic or appropriate price. So an appropriate price, whether it is towards higher side or it's towards lower side, that appropriate price will generate maximum profits. And later on at the end of this session, we will see that appropriate price will be profit maximizing price, which we will develop by setting up an equilibrium. Equilibrium is a balance okay that neither very high price is in our best interest nor very low price is in our best interest nor very high quantity is good for us nor very low quantity is good for us so a balanced price and quantity will be the solutions okay so this is what we are going to understand so let's start it with little things first of all deriving the demand curve so this is the formula provided to you in the formula sheet in exams P equals to A minus BQ. B is change in price divided by change in quantity, which is the slope or gradient of the demand curve. And A is the maximum price when quantity equals to zero or very low. Now here is little example to understand how do we derive the demand curve. By the way, uh, examiner never mentioned what is this P and what is this Q. So I can explain to you here as well, Price simply, P re reflects the price. This is a price and Q is quantity. But these are some specific price and quantities. These are not any, app, any isolated price or isolated quantities. Now remember please, this P and this Q is based upon past experience or past statistics. That if company was selling this product in the past, okay, how many units Q were sold at this price 
or if the price was this much in the past how many units were sold by the company so what companies do when they set up the price they collect statistics that at this price how many units we were successful to sell and then we change the price let's say from 10 to 11 and if the price went up to 11 then how many units we sold so p and q are actually combination of price and quantity coming from the past statistics okay not alone price and alone quantity okay here is the example biscon a product sells 500 units at a price of 25 based upon their past experience and 700 units at a price of $20 per unit. Establish the equation of the demand curve. So here we go. Let's have a look at demand curve equation, which is P equals to A minus BQ. Now, based upon the information provided, always calculate B first, okay, which is change in price divided by change in quantity okay which is or in other words difference in price divided by difference in quantity now here is difference in price 25 and 20 and the difference will be simplify divided by change in quantity or difference in quantity one quantity is 500 another one is 700 so put the put them in the calculators in such a way you don't end up with negative answers. So please don't put them as 500 minus 700. Otherwise you will get a value of B as negative. And if you will get the value of B as negative and you take this, substitute this in this equation, two negative signs, what happens to two negative signs? They end up being positive, okay? So this negative sign is already there, so best is to avoid any mathematical problems, put them the numbers, numerator and denominator in such a way that higher value first and then lower value after, okay? So higher price minus lower price and then higher quantity minus lower quantity to see the difference in price divided by difference in quantity. So that comes to five divided by 200 and here we go. 5 over 200 equals to 0 0.025. Okay, 0 0.025. This is the relationship between price and quantity. Okay, now afterwards, once we develop this, now we can find out the value of A by substituting any of the P and Q combinations. Okay, so whether you can substitute one combination or another it doesn't really make any difference just make sure pick up a whole combination of price and quantity meaning to say in this question there were two pairs or two combinations given one was the 500 quantity and 25 price and second combination or pair was 700 quantity and 20 dollars price choose one of the two so let me actually choose this combination and the second one you can try while you are watching my lesson okay let me try the first combination and you can try the second one we both will get to the same answer so when the price was 20 so here is p equals to a minus b q now p is let's say 25 at 25 quantity was 500 okay this is quantity and equals to a as it is minus b remember point two zero two five okay now this is what we get so if you multiply this point zero two five into five hundred we get twelve point five so it comes like this twenty five on one side then a minus twelve point five and if we move this to the other side of the equation, but remember, if you are moving a negative sign to the other side of equation, negative will become positive, positive will become negative, okay? Now here we go, let's calculate A. 
a equals to 25 plus 12.5 and that equals to 37.5 meaning maximum price based upon our past understanding relationship or history a is 37.5 which company should avoid so demand function or equation of this company's product will be p equals to 37.5 minus b which is 0 0.025 q now this is how do we calculate now the interpretation what if we have calculated this what benefit does it give us what do you think we learned how to calculate p equals to a minus b q which is not too difficult at all first of all calculate b and then substituting this b into any price and quantity combination we can get a as well but what's the benefit of getting a and b values well here is the benefit it answers many questions but two are very very important which can improve performance of the company number one question number one is that if for example marketing or sales team remember target costing you remember target costing yes you do remember target costing is a process which starts with setting up selling price first so establish selling price first so for example using target costing you know the price that this is my launching price and you know a and b already so if you know p you have a you have b can you not find out this missing q by putting if out of four things okay one two three four out of four variables if three variables are known to us can we not find out the fourth one okay so if management knows the target or selling price they can determine appropriate quantity to be sold how many units production team should be willing should be going to produce for the next period okay this is the first question second is what if we don't know the price and we are looking to find the price then we need to ask our production or sales team how many units will you produce next month or next period and how many units how many units can you possibly sell over the next period so if the sales and production teams after having a meeting they tell us this is what we are planning to produce and sell for the next period now q is known to us can we not find out appropriate price for that quantity that if they are willing to sell those number of units this should be the most appropriate price and that would maximize our profitability okay so this was the demand curve and its usefulness okay now we are looking at profit maximizing approach profit maximizing approach is that this demand curve is a basis to be used to develop profit maximizing price okay i can write down some steps for you okay and then we will discuss and solve a question as well okay so profit maximizing price in order to calculate this profit maximizing price step number one calculate demand equation which is p equals to a minus b q step number one takes literally two to three minutes if you do the practice okay now remember we've just calculated this demand curve equation which was p equals to a minus bq and what answers did we get from this equation remember we've got values of b and a is it okay afterwards step number two okay equate marginal revenue and marginal cost
equate marginal revenue and marginal cost. I'll explain it in a minute, okay? After equating marginal revenue and marginal cost, you will get Q. After this step, you will be able to get Q. And then last step is substitute Q into P equals to A minus B Q, which is demand curve, you will be able to get P, which is the profit maximizing price. So very small little easy steps. Now we are going to look into them. We've seen demand equation already. So let me spend some time to understand the equating marginal revenue and marginal cost. Okay. First of all, what are they? Marginal revenue is incremental or additional revenue when we sell an additional unit. And marginal cost is variable or incremental cost when we produce an incremental or extra unit. So if one extra unit sold generated marginal revenue and one additional unit produced incurred variable or extra cost, okay? idea is that this marginal revenue should be greater than the marginal cost if not equal okay but it should not marginal revenue should not be lower than the marginal cost okay so idea is that marginal revenue okay should at least be balanced with the marginal cost that we are not making much money but at least we are making sufficient money to cover the extra cost Okay, and that helps us to maximize the profits. Now, let's understand marginal revenue and marginal cost in slightly more details. Okay, you don't need to worry too much. Examiner will give us clear instructions. I will, I will tell you in a minute. Okay, right. Here is a marginal revenue and marginal cost curves. Okay, so if here is the quantity demanded and here is the cost or revenues, okay, we can look at this here, marginal revenue okay meaning to say is that when the quantity sold is very low okay revenue is low and when the quantity demanded goes up what happens to the marginal revenue okay let me do it again when the quantity sold, when the quantity demanded is, for example, less, marginal revenue is very high. And as the quantity demanded goes up, marginal revenue keeps on coming down. Okay, or actually, let me show you in a slightly different way. The, the curve, which is slightly better way to explain from the scratch. Okay, uh, remember the demand curve which was demand here and price there and remember it was something like this okay this is unitary demand curve otherwise it is like this okay demand curve is like this but we use unitary demand curve this was demand curve okay let's take it from there if i want to slot or if i want to draw marginal if i want to draw a revenue line or revenue sales line remember in uh, CVP analysis sales line was something like this okay as the units increase sales or revenue increases okay now idea is simply this that wherever the marginal revenue cuts the demand function that establishes an equilibrium a balance meaning to say a very high price is not very good for us and a very low price is also not very good for us a very high quantity is not suitable very low quantity is not suitable so some balanced price and balanced quantity combinations must be there in order to maximize the profitability in order to maximize the profitability Let's understand this with the help of a table with the, before we look into some algebra, okay? For example, if I create some, 
simple figures okay here is price and here is quantity I'm just assuming okay I'm just assuming when the price was let's say 10 quantity was 1000 is that okay right or quantity was even 100 let's make it even smaller when price was 10 quantity was 100 just assume price goes up by 11 and quantity goes down to 90 price goes to 12 and quantity goes down to 80 price is 13 quantity is 70 14 and 60 so you can see I am changing it at the same okay price is increasing by one dollar and the quantity is decreasing by 10 units okay afterwards what we are going to look into this is let's decrease let's decrease the price okay what if the price goes down to 9 and the quantity goes up to 110 what if we reduce the price further to 8 and the quantity increases further to 120 or even 7 and quantity goes further up to 130 what possible things may happen okay so first of all is change in price and change in quantity is it okay and you can see I was changing the price by one dollar and I was changing the quantity by exactly 10 units at every interval now let me assume some more numbers let's say we are given variable cost okay variable cost including maybe direct materials direct labor variable overheads etc you are familiar with the variable cost let's assume whether the price is seven dollars eight nine or ten variable cost is five dollars I'm just assuming a simple figure you wouldn't even need calculators for okay variable cost is five regardless of what price we set okay because value of materials will not change value of labor will not change let's assume it is constant okay now let's calculate total contribution at each level at each combination let's calculate total contribution remember selling price minus variable cost is contribution times by quantity equals to the total contribution so let's pick up the calculator okay so 7 minus 5 is 2 dollars contribution multiplied by 130 so contribution comes to 260 okay let's calculate all of them it will take one minute you will see something interesting okay 3 into 120 is 360 then 4 into 110 is 440 and then I, I'm, all I'm doing is selling price minus variable cost contribution then multiplied by the number of units so 10 minus 5 is 5 5 into 100 is 500 so at the moment it looks like as we are increasing the price our contribution or profit is increasing okay then 11 minus 5 is 6 into 90 which is 540 and then 12 minus 5 into 80 which is 560 and then 13 minus 5 into 70 which is 560 and then 14 minus 5 times 60 is 540 and let me do one more if the price went up to 15 units went down to 50 variable cost remains the same 15 minus 5 times by 50 it comes to 500 oh did you notice something 
that up to a certain level the contribution or profit was increasing and then when the price and quantity reached to a certain range or combination the profit or contribution started falling okay it was increasing 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 up to here and then started falling and if you keep on doing like this price to 16 price to 17 price to 18 you would notice your contribution value will keep going down okay your contribution value will keep going down because what we are observing is that how many how much extra revenue we generate and how much extra marginal cost we incur okay and what we notice that up to a certain level of price and quantity combination profits can be maximized if we reduce the price that's not good for us if we increase the price that's not very good for us either okay so a certain range of price or certain amount of price is only working in the best interest of the company now of course in exams we can't do this trial and error I was just showing you that that's how a number of companies develop spreadsheets and they can find out the answers being an accountant we can use a little bit of algebra or a little bit of maths and we can find out the answer even more quickly okay and what we consider is we consider this equating marginal revenue and marginal cost equating marginal revenue and marginal cost please remember for your exam purposes marginal cost is always variable cost okay only variable cost is the marginal cost whereas MR function is given in the formula sheet of the exam paper MR equals to a minus 2bq okay you don't need to uh, worry about deriving MR function okay it's given in the exams just need to apply this only you might have noticed some similarity between MR and demand function remember what was the demand function that was P equals to a minus BQ and what is the difference did you notice only this two because what we believe is that slope of marginal revenue is twice the slope of marginal cost okay slope or gradient of marginal revenue is twice the slope of marginal cost uh, twice the slope of demand curve sorry okay so slope of marginal revenue is twice the slope of demand curve but this function is given we just need to learn how to apply it is it okay now let's have a look at an exam question and then we will apply those three steps okay three steps I can show you again these ones profit maximizing steps okay let's have a look at an example called optim limited so it's an exam standard question optim limited makes a single product a washing machine the standard cost card for a machine is as follows they given us materials labor and variable overheads so these are can I define them these are variable costs okay output for the month is budgeted to be 5,000 units and monthly fixed overheads are expected to be hundred thousand dollars fixed costs are expected to remain at this level of output uh, at this level if output rises to seven and a half thousand units per month so meaning to say even if we produce five and a half thousand units six thousand units six and a half seven thousand our fixed costs will remain the same that's the definition of the fixed costs the company currently uses a full cost so currently at present company uses full cost approach to pricing and adds hundred percent on to the full cost per unit to calculate selling price so whatever the full cost is plus hundred percent profit markup they arrive at the selling price this is cost plus however sales volumes and profits have been disappointing therefore the company commissioned some market research to determine the relationship between costs and volumes the research showed that a price of two hundred and fifty dollars per unit sales would be 6,000 units per month 
and would reduce by 500 per month for each $10 rise in price. So if the price set is 250 for a washing machine, a unit sold will be 6,000. But if we increase the price by $10, the demand or quantity would fall by 500 units. And it applies both ways. If we decrease the price by 10, the quantity will go up by 500. It works both ways. Now here are the requirements. A is using the company's current full cost plus approach to pricing, what selling price are they attempting to charge? So that's the first requirement, cost plus. Full cost plus. Okay, first of all, variable cost. Variable cost is direct materials, labor and variable overheads. So 50, 30 and 40 in total 120 is that okay? Now here is the fixed cost. Now what we are given about the fixed cost that company is spending $100,000 and the normal level of budgeted level of activity is 5000 So 100000 remember absorption costing, budgeted overheads divided by budgeted activity 5000 units and you can see it works out $20 of fixed overheads and the full cost comes to $140 then we need to add profit they said profit markup is 100% okay it's slightly to lavish but anyway it's the company's policy 100 percent of 140 will be the same and at the moment current selling price is 280 dollars that's the current selling price okay requirement A done. So they are selling whatever number of machines at $280. Afterwards requirement B. Derive the demand function or the equation and use that to calculate the monthly profit based on cost plus approach to pricing. Now there are two things okay. First of all derive the demand function p equals to a minus bq and then use that meaning use that demand function to calculate monthly profit profit is revenue minus cost based on cost plus approach to pricing which we have done already so let's do things one by one first of all derive the demand equation which is p equals to a minus bq okay Right, so here is P equals to A minus BQ. First of all, let's calculate B, which is change in price divided by change in quantity. That $10 change in price will change the quantity by 500 units. So 10 over 500 equals to 0 0.02. And now let's substitute this 0.02 <coughs> into the demand function by picking up any price and quantity combination. So what they gave us was here. Market research showed that at a price of 250, sales would be 6,000 units. So this combination was given to us. When the price is 250, quantity would be 6,000 units. And A as it is, B is 0.02 times by Q okay so that fraction 
you can work out times by 6000 that comes to 120 so 250 equals to a minus 120 and then a equals to 250 plus because this minus sign will go to the other side to become positive and that comes to 370 so demand function of this company is p equals to a minus b q okay which is 370 minus 0 0.02 q this is first part of b second part is examiner is asking us use this demand function which we have derived to calculate monthly profits based upon cost plus approach to pricing remember in requirement a cost plus approach price was 280 what if the price set at the moment is 280 how many washing machines we can sell we can calculate the quantity so 280 equals to 370 minus 0 0.02 times by q okay now everything is there we just have to calculate q okay you need to use your cal scientific calculators and it will give you in one go if you bang all the numbers in the calculators you can get the answers but I can just explain to you briefly, which you don't need to write these step by step in exams, okay? Just to some people are slightly poor in maths like me, okay? So for them people, otherwise just bang them in the scientific calculators, you can get the answers. So it becomes like this, 280 equals to 370 minus 0 0.02 Q, okay? And what if we move this to the other side of the equation, it becomes 280 minus 370 and on this side we have 0 0.02 Q and it's negative so it ends up with 370 sorry 280 minus 370 we get minus 90 and here is minus 0 0.02 Q now please remember in the maths if negative signs are on both sides of the equations they get cancelled with each other so you don't need to worry about now both sides divided by 0 0.02 q 0 0.02 okay we can easily calculate the quantity so 90 divided by 0 0.02 we get 4500 units that if they set a price of 280 which is cost plus price at the moment they can sell around four and a half thousand units and if this happens what will be the profit okay so here is the profit calculation first of all sales 4500 units times by selling price 280 then minus variable cost 4500 units times by remember 120 I think and minus fixed costs which will be one hundred thousand dollars because fixed cost will not change whether we will produce slightly more slightly less number of units so let's find out four and a half thousand into two hundred and eighty which is one million two hundred and sixty thousand dollars variable cost is four thousand five hundred into one twenty which is five hundred and forty thousand and minus fixed cost we end up with six hundred and twenty thousand dollars profit so I answer is simply this if we set a price of 280 based upon our existing pricing policy 
we will sell four and a half thousand washing machines and this price and volume combination is expected to generate six hundred and twenty thousand dollars profit okay now let's have a look at requirement C equate marginal revenue and marginal cost to determine profit maximizing price and then we will double check whether this is this really profit maximizing price or it is just in theory okay so here is equate marginal revenue and marginal cost marginal revenue function as I said it's always given in the formula sheet you don't need to memorize it it's very straightforward anyway which is a minus 2bq and marginal cost is the variable cost marginal cost is always variable cost a is 370 based upon this equation this question 2 as it is remember b was 0 0.02 and q as it is equals to 120 now let's play around with this and see what answer do we get we can use calculator so 370 minus 120 divided by 0 0.04 we get Q equals to 6250 units okay so by equating MR and MC we've got the optimum quantity most suitable quantity let's substitute this suitable quantity into demand function as a last step okay so p equals to 370 which is a minus b is 0 0.02 and q we have just calculated 6250 and let's see how much price does this give us it comes to 245 so what it's telling us if we use the demand function to de develop maximum price or profit maximize sorry not maximum profit maximizing price it will be 245 dollars so theoretically what we are saying is if we sell one washing machine for 245 dollars we can sell around 6250 washing machines let's double check what would be likely profit if this happens that sell washing machines at 245 and sell to 6250 units okay so here is expected profit which is not asked in this question but it can be a likely question for another two three marks okay sales 6250 units and now the selling price is 245 okay then minus variable costs 6250 times by remember variable cost is 120 and then minus fixed costs and fixed costs do not change whether we sell a bit more or a bit less so here is my calculator 6250 into 245 giving us total revenue of 1531 1 million 531,250 dollars and then 6250 into 120 variable cost is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and then hundred thousand dollars is the fixed cost as well so in total maximum possible profits which we are expecting this time around would be six hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so management may change their pricing policy they don't need to charge two hundred and eighty dollars which is too high price okay they can reduce the price if they reduce the price to two hundred and forty five their volume will pick their volume will increase 
and based upon this their overall profits will be increased as well so this is how we apply the demand based pricing approach in order to maximize the profits so again as usual i give you the advice okay please read your study material okay textbook and the notes then watch this video again try to practice this question and then any additional practice questions in the revision kit relating to this topic and then also any problems give us the feedback okay take care all the very best and i will see you soon with another acca topic goodbye